What's up, dirty plant hoes and all you dirty plant enthusiasts out there? It is I, Rachel, your plant madam. Today we're gonna do a two month spider farmer tent update. And it's been important for me to kind of keep track of what's going on because I've never done any kind of houseplant growing inside of a grow tent. So it's been interesting and I have experienced the learning curve, especially with the watering situation because I've got a fan in there. It's a whole deal. I'll explain. I know. We know. Okay, so here in the tent, things seem to be going good. The Hoyas have been growing really well. Just a little runner right there. Lots of new growth on this guy. He has really exploded like all the way down here. And he, and he definitely was not that long last month. So he is really enjoying the extra light. Then we have the allocation dragon scale right here. Finally starting to put off some bigger, more, more colored leaves right there. Isn't that just gorgeous? How beautiful is that? Then my little Florida ghost here that needs to be repotted for sure. And we've got the pink princess here that I chopped. I chopped a couple of the tops of the pink princesses and I need to show you guys what those look like because they were so variegated. That is why I chopped them. And then back here we have the Monstera Aurea that I had chopped in half the two nodes that I got. You guys remember from eBay not too long ago. This is the other one. You can see the, the variegation on that if I step back to a weird angle. That's gonna be a stunning leaf right there. Look at that. Gorgeous. So those two pieces of node that we spagged and bagged did really, really well. The Wyeti is also doing really well. Things are looking good in here. They grow really fast. But the problem is, and I'm gonna show you, I had another got too dry spell over here, which sucked, but I need ventilation in here and I didn't have time to go and get like one of those USBs. So I put this old retro rotating fan in here, which works really good because it moves the air, but it's also severely drying out everything up here on the top shelf. So the amount of time that I'm used to letting everything go in here, I just simply can't afford to let it go that long anymore. Those are our mysterious brown spots that I treated, um, I think about a week and a half ago or so. And then, I underwatered because I'm a dick. <sighs> Me and the pink princesses, it's like we get along and then we fight and then we get along and then we fight. But the leaves have been looking extra, extra beautiful since putting them in the tent. I will say that they were not putting off that level of irrigation beforehand. Okay, move the pink princess little guy out of the way because all this is just this little, little pink princess area basically like a one, two, three, four or so all back here, all in this little tray area. Then on the next little tray over, we have the painted lady. She has actually grown like a ton since putting her in here and the leaves look fantastic. Really great variegation on the painted lady. My little sis's discolor back there finally put out two leaves. So there may still yet be hope. I knew that there, if there was any chance for her at all, it was going to be in here. So I'm glad to see that she's doing well. The anthuriums, they really love it in here. This is the last leaf that this seedling put off. And look, there is already another little leaf under there. It is just working triple time compared to any other anthuriums that I've got. So that's the one that Cody sent me most recently. And then right next door to that is the Half Moon Albo, which I also lovingly placed in here and you can see the little growth point that's right there on the variegation line and that's trying to come out so i just potted her up not too long ago when we did our repotting video together uh, i'm not sure how long ago that was not too, too not too long and here's another plant that cody sent to me this is the glorious and glorious it is indeed how freaking beautiful is that I cannot wait to get that guy in particular potted up because he is quite gorgeous. And then here's my little thing that I'm the most worried about right now. This is my little begonia thymae. 
and I was so worried about it in fact that I actually ordered a second one for Mountain Orchids because I was so worried I was going to lose it. The stem was completely hooked over onto itself. All of the other leaves had died and I just love this begonia too much. Far too much. So I have another one on order from Mountain Orchids in anticipation of this one not working out. And then I put in, since last time, this little Hoya Matilde, these little cuttings, and the roots are just, yeah. They're ready for their own little Lekka pot. I love putting these little Hoya clippings that uh, Cody sends to me in Lekka pots. And I've said this a hundred times, but I swear I'm not threatening anymore. It's time for the pot accumulation because I don't like all my plants kind of being in the plastic wear. I'm kind of getting to the point where I would like for them to all have at least a nice home to choose from when I do decide to pot them up. So also this pitcher plant. So this is the last pitcher that it had and you can see that it's kind of like headed out of town. But there is another one right there. And check this little dude out back here. Look at that little dude. That is so cute. And then another one right here, but I think this one got all crispy. So it's like, I'm not really sure. This is my really, my first like big pitcher plant type of plant. So we're getting two more and I've lost one. So I think it's doing good. The new leaves are very glossy and green. They look super healthy. I think I'm doing everything right. It's just kind of getting used to its new crib. You know what I mean? Beautiful, beautiful. That's everything for the top floor. I'd say things that I'm most impressed about with all of this stuff is the variegation levels. Just like last time we talked about for the Aurea, Gorgeous, gorgeous levels of variegation there. And the pink princesses have been shooting variegation like crazy since I put them in here. Let me show you the tops of the two pink princesses and then we can move to the bottom shelf. So I had these over on my other rack, but these are the other two pink princess cuttings that I took from the top. Like you can see, full half moon, fully pink leaf. And I went ahead and cut these to make more mother plants. So, wow. I mean, can you, I went from barely seeing pink to getting a fully pink leaf directly related to light levels, which afterwards you kind of feel like, well, duh, but you never, I always have a hard time knowing exactly how much light my plants are getting. So using this light makes it a lot simpler. I know that I'm getting a lot closer to, you know, outside levels of light, not just my little my lights that keeps things going most of all. Okay, so down here on the bottom level, we have my variegated sea hibiscus and the variegation levels still look absolutely stunning. I love the impact of the white leaves up towards the top and they've really been blushing and turning pink and things. Everything's kind of shifted over to green now, but it looks really, really, really good and I love it. This is a good illustration of just how dry I let some of my begonias get. I watered that probably five or 10 minutes ago, but it hasn't picked back up yet. That's how dry I let my begonias get. I don't really set, I don't keep them moist. I let them dry out like everything else. This one just may have gotten a little too, too dry. And then this big beautiful boy is my um, Equigenera Varicosum Cross Gigantium Philodendron. And at first, when I first got it, I was kind of disappointed a little bit, just to be honest with you. Um, I get the fact that the cross leans more towards the gigantium side, but check out this leaf. That looks pretty crazy. I'm pretty into it. Pretty, pretty cool. So it's already got a new growth point as well. Just a really good reflection of how the light is doing. I have several begonias in here. We pulled them out of the bubble last time, but I'm kind of afraid to do it this time because I don't think I'll be able to get the lid back on. So we'll skip opening that one, but they're actually doing really well as well. Then right next door to that, I have my Philodendron Luxurians. And these are the leaves that I had previously put out outside of the tent. And uh, actually this was in a tub that I got this, this leaf right here. And this leaf right here is so beautiful. Very velvety. I'll try to catch the sheen for you. Very gorgeous, very velvety. 
I love that this leaf actually came out in one piece. Great success. This is the one, one of the ones that I keep all in sphagnum moss. Had never done that before in a terracotta pot. So that was the first time I'd ever done that. Then we have the um, proposed Esquilito and the runner that's coming off of it. I'm guessing this probably isn't as close to the light as it wants to be. Also did a little bit of crazy leaf bleaching once I potted it up. So that was interesting. Just an uh, interesting thing of note there. Lost quite a bit of color in the leaf there and also in this back leaf. Lost a little bit of color. That's some spag right there. Oh, shit, I'm sweating my arse off. Okay, and to round it up will be our last tray in here. We have our begonia lucerna, our begonia titan right here. I think I'm going to pull that out for you. I've got a Miss Kim variegated Maranta in the back. I have a No ID, maybe Maurice Amy begonia. We also have like little Exotica guy back here, which he's finally putting on a leaf. So that's good news. Good news for that guy. And here is the Titan. Let's give you like a little size perspective of just how Oh, look at you. You're putting out new leaves right here. Focus, shithead. There you go. Look at how cool and how big. Oh, favorite plant right now. No joke. Favorite plant. Straight out of the Jurassic period. So neat. Okay, we'll just put him out to the side because I'm not going to be able to see this other stuff. Here is my Begonia Lucerne. Also much more green. It's not as close to the lighting. Very beautiful. Angel wing, dragon wing, however you want to call it. These things have just gotten so freaking huge since being in here. Like completely out of control. They just want to wall out in here. Lots of good light. Lots of moisture from being humid. And this little guy right here. Got a couple crispy tips, but I think we went into the tent with crispy tips. I was especially um, going to pay attention to these and like how they did, because I think they will appreciate the tent life quite a bit. And perhaps, not for sure, but perhaps it might keep a little bit of the pests at bay. I would hope that that would happen in here, but I'm keeping my eyes open. I haven't had anything quite happen yet. I'm sitting on the floor, so. That's what it looks like from underneath when you're on the floor. You know, dried up little, little. It was so cute for so long though. There's a little baby guy right here. Okay guys, thank you so much for coming today and checking out some of my <laughs> update on what is going on in my grow tent right now. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider becoming a part of our Dirty Plant Ho family. There is uh, membership levels for this channel and you can check it out on the desktop version of YouTube. I don't know, magical stuff. If you're bored watering your plants and you're needing something to listen to, you can check out our podcast channel, Heart Shaped Leaves After Dark. And now introducing my third channel, which will be a vlog style channel with no rules and no regulations of any kind, whatever the hell I wanna do. And it's called Rachel's So-Called Life. I don't know if it'll be searchable yet <laughs> at the time of this video, but you can try to see if you can find it. We love you guys. Peace out. Later taters. Bye. Thank you, my hand of mine. Oh my goodness, how much egg am I? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, you want to see goodbyes? All right, you tell them. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Break these walls down, I don't need them. Call the police, I'm a free man. I don't care what they would say, cause I am free from these prison gates. I said, Break these walls down, I don't need them. Call the police, I'm a free man. I don't care what they would say, cause I am free from these prison gates. I said, Break these walls down, I don't need them. Call the police, I'm a free man. I